dances and speeches have been seen and heard, Altabelli picked up where he left off in 1982. Rickon made them pay the penalty with a late equaliser. He set off on a personal lap of honour, while replays of the goal from every possible angle, Villado's men quickly got down to business against the South Korean side competing at the finals for the first time. Time after time, Maradona created Argentina's first two goals with free kicks, and their third with a far post cross. Boruchaga in the field, defensive resolution of Jose Luis Brown. Midfielders and not one established striker. Created not one serious goal attempt and got what they did. Some serious goal attempt and got what they did. Mexico 86, Mexico 86, donde se vive la injury home with him from the season in Spain. So the roar which greeted his goal, Mexico's second, echoed around the country in which almost failed dismally in the second half to build on that rare success. Any appetite for a fight seemed sadly lacking. Expected to be even weaker. The only goal fell to Julio Romero, Paraguay's midfield general, who starred like Maradona in the 1970s together for almost six months. Cohesion achieved was evident after only two minutes of the start against Paraguay. Boy was again the creator. Sanchez collected his second yellow card of the tournament. He missed the group decider against Iraq. Romero was one of the early stars of the event. else expected to beat Iraq and run up a hatful of goals. He made no secret of Iraq's approach to the World Cup. He said we didn't come here. Continuing defiance meant that they Belgium's complacency to claim an excellent goal of their own. Because opening goal of the finals against Belgium put his name on the score sheet again. That portion joined them as one of the four best third place teams. Kaiser by springing the Belgian offside trap. Ace had had to rebuild his team around reliable performers from the past like Eric Heretz and Jan Kerlemans. Cabanas, who'd been playing with the America Club of Colombia, would earn a lucrative transfer to France. We're in no position to argue. They made France wait 78 minutes for the winner. Jean-Pierre Papa, who would later develop into one of them, not prepared for an onslaught which brought the Soviet Union three cracking goals inside the first half an hour. The Hungarians were sent spies along to the Hungarians were sent spies along to the Soviets' last training game, a match against the local Mexican team, in which the visitors had scored ten goals. Disky scrapped the World Cup squad announced by Malofayev and named a new one, including 12 of his own men from the Ukraine. 
Alvarez. Goal of the finals so far. Thirty years in this match, we had no choice. We had to win. For the good of Meze's nerves, Hungary, nerves, Hungary scored a second goal midway through the second half. On veg Lajos de Tari starting and completing the move. Union it took France only half an hour to break down Hungary's brittle resistance. Once Yannick Stopira, son of a former international, had scored, but also amid speculation that he and Meze could always see eye to eye. Even Niloshi might have been pushed to control Tigana. No more self-confidence. Dominique Roshko enjoyed the freedom of the park. In France, had to be called up from a rest on the bench to replace the injured Oleg Protasov. He promptly used his skills to set up second half earlier with a masterly midfield display as Kiev had beaten Atletico Madrid in the European Cup winners. Atletico Madrid in the European Cup. México 86, México 86, donde se vive la emoción. Minimum action and no goals. The Lisco Stadium saw a welcome contrast. Fine football illuminated by the sunshine. Five minutes. Kicks Jamel Zidane rifled Algeria's equaliser beyond Pat Jennings. after only a minute. As Spain went further ahead through Julio Salinas, Irish manager Billy Bingham was furious, describing it as a giveaway goal. Reality known as Montezuma's revenge. One of the first victims had been Barcelona midfielder Ramon Caldere. It had taken him until now to regain. Their fans still waited impatiently to see Zico. made a happy return as a second-half substitute alongside his goal-hungry teammates. Top scorer in the qualifiers with eight goals, carried on where he had left off back in Europe the previous autumn. most of his teammates or opponents and it was Foller whose dogged pursuit of the ball laid on the match winner for Alos. Not since Holland introduced what became known as total football to the rest of the world in the early 70s and they narrowed the gap with a penalty from Enzo Francescoli. was that their domestic game had stayed amateur while most other countries had turned professional. The Danes were in danger of being left behind. One kept to the rules. Players who did not fly back for training or selection with the national team were ignored. So was anyone not playing first team.
it was who rounded off Denmark's six goals special. In the second half, both Litvarski and Rummenigge were brought into the action, but by then it was too late. Denmark had established a two-goal advantage through Jesper, was open to doubt. scored the goal, which helped Portugal forget that now, shot beneath Vitor Damas, Portugal's reserve goalkeeper. Damas had been rushed into... No African side had ever previously broken through the first round barrier. Portugal played for the army team FAR. They were reigning African club champions. Managing both club and country was a Brazilian. Portugal could offer little by way of washed away by Morocco and the rain, along with their prospects of World Cup progress. Hodge were brought into the starting lineup. They made a world of difference, especially to Gary Lineker. Up finishing. For the fans of England and even Poland, to say nothing of Lineker himself. Nothing of Lineker himself. The Soviets, they roared through their group matches while the Belgians struggled. They had been scoring almost at will while the Belgians had appeared barely willing to try a shot for tap football with Enzo Schifo equalizing. Referee Eric Fredriksson had no doubts. The match ran on into extra time. The classic route to glory begins with a slow start. The Soviet team was not a machine. The clockwork was beginning to wind down. Goalkeeper Pfaff was furious, but not for long. Belgium had reached the quarterfinals. Poland had missed the boat. Zico arrived as a substitute for soccer. With the kickoff, they belted the ball downfield. Each player ran to his predetermined tactical position. Mexico's midfield general, Manuel Corner, headed home by Raul Servin. Everyone was delighted to see the Mexicans reach the quarterfinals. Equally welcome was the sight of the negative. No quarter ask, none given. In this case, it was Diego Maradona who showed no mercy. He unleashed all his brilliant gifts. Uruguay for the red card. If Paraguay had concentrated more on their football, they might have run England closer. Paraguay hadn't held the first shot from Terry Butcher. Peter Beardsley was waiting to pounce. And Lineker's second goal provided England with an unassailable 3-0 lead. But this Italian team looked tired. France had more flair and style, and they had Michel Platini. Italy was so worried about second goal, which ended Italy's four-year reign on top of the world. Brockens, their concentration wavering, failed to organize their wall properly. Lota Mateus shot through the gap, and the Moroccan adventure was over. The area before Olsen had even struck his kick. Hero of the day was Emilio on other sport. They didn't. They had second thoughts, and Denmark paid a four-goal penalty.
no one could accuse them of being boring in victory or defeat. Spain's Emilio Butrigueño became the first player to score four goals in a match in the fight. Sophisticated French champions of the old world against the greatest soccer nation in the new world. It was Brazil who seized an early lead. Careca's fifth goal of the fight. Cross, goalkeeper Carlos and Stoppida missed the ball and Platini tapped it in at the far post. Mexico 86 offered no fewer than 14 matches at risk. No one had expected that three of the prestigious quarterfinals would go. that semi-final in Seville four years earlier had been drastically threatened. Given up hope, German substitute Rudy Fuller scored a second goal, which was almost academic. This time, unlike in 1982, the Germans hadn't needed penalties. Argentina looking a class superior to Belgium. And a footballer of proven genius. Belgium didn't complain in defeat. Reaching the semi-final itself had been prize enough. They knew they did. that may have been more of a handicap than a virtue, despite taking an early lead through Jan Kerlemann's World Cup battle fatigue ultimately proved their answer. Bremont Copa and Just Fontaine had always been compared with that era. Not any longer. French football now had a new point of reference.
it's Jean-Pierre Papin who put them into the lead before half-time. Nico Klaassen's equaliser for Belgium after 72 minutes sent his teammates into it again. Gengini scored in an undignified but ultimately rewarding goalmouth scramble. He seemed to have had his poorest game of the finals. In fact, he was fouled for the free kick, which produced Argentina's first goal. He was instrumental in the move. Germany had reached the final thanks to traditional virtues, such as effort, commitment, and a solid defence. In a competition of erratic standards, then, and only then applied themselves to attacking Argentina. With 17 minutes to go, Rummenigge made up one goal. Suddenly, West Germany's first header, Rudi Voller following up. Germany level 2-2. Argentina's mastery in the tournament. Buruchaga found the net. The hand of God will shortly lift the World Cup. This may have been flawed by his notorious...